Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Fiddle and we make stuff. We are on part two of the month long Halloween special and we're going to be making a surgery card and table along with answering one of the number one questions that I see the most, how to print in miniature or any smaller scale really. Don't forget to check the link in the description where you will find updates, the list of materials, and even patterns. We're going to start with printing things in miniature. Start with drawing a square the size that you want whatever picture you are shrinking down to be. The paper that comes with your printer or you get for your printer is the best bet to go for on this. We don't need anything fancy like glossy paper because we are just using it as a template. One square is fine unless you have multiple exact sizes that you want. Next, take that piece of paper, place it inside your scanner, and scan it. Then save it as whatever you would like, wherever you would like, but just remember where you put it because you will need it in just a few minutes. I saved mine in the file folder that I created for this project. Once you've saved, close your printer programming. Then open up an art editing program. Really, it just needs to be able to create layers. I am using Sketchbook, there is also Art Rage, Photoshop, Krita, and a few others that have this capability. Once in the program, go to File and open up your save of the square that you scanned in. Next, find the Add a Layer option. It will open up your files and from there you can select what pictures you want to shrink down. Once you have a photo selected, it will give you the option to move it around on your screen and change the size of it. You can use that to make the image smaller and fit inside of your drawn square. Then move it off to the side and you can choose the add another layer option again and keep adding photos until you've filled the page or you've added as many as you want to print. Save the file, then close the program. Next, find your picture and print it out. I should have made mine a bit smaller than what I did, but thankfully the smallest one I was able to use. I'll save the others for a later project. To make a backing and frame for this picture, I used cardstock, cut out two squares that were both a quarter of an inch all the way around, bigger than my actual picture. Cut the center out of one to make a frame, and colored the frame silver with my paint pen. Then I glued it to the wall above the surgery table. Speaking of surgery table, that's what we're going to make next. We're going to need our wire cutters and wire to start. I wanted my table to have round corners, and I realized that the Dollar Tree little container lid was just perfect for me to use as a mold. Starting at one corner, I bent it all the way around to the other side. Now, even though this is the right shape for the ends, I needed it longer than what the lid was. I left a bit of space in between bending the other end up. If you can't find a lid or something shaped like this in the size that you need, you can always just use your craft mat lines and a pair of regular needle nose pliers. It's just a bit easier on the hands doing it this way. When you have your shape made, cut your wire as close as you can to the other end. If you want to, you can even add a piece of tape at the ends, but I would suggest keeping it thin because that'll show up through the aluminum. Next, take some brown tape or painter's tape and tape your wire frame to your table. But make sure you are right up underneath of the wire as close as you can be and make sure that you're taping down on all four sides. That'll really help keep it stabilized while you're working with it. Once you have that done, and sorry about the shaky camera. Anyways, you will need to get out any creases or lines left over from manufacturing just like we have before using a hard round tool of some sort. I'm using the handle of a silicone spatula tool thing, but I have used all kinds of different things to get what I need, even pen caps. Once your piece of aluminum is smoothed out, lay it out as straight as you can possibly get over your wire frame and tape it down at one end. You don't want to do it at both because your piece of metal is going to change quite a bit. Then using some sort of hard tool, Press the aluminum around the first piece or the first bit of wire at one end. Then start on the inside and go from one end to the other. You don't want to go just around the edges. You want to make sure and smooth out the center too because that will help prevent wrinkles and kinks along the way. 
once you've gotten the inside taken care of, go ahead and do around the edge. And this time you will really want to try to get it up underneath of the wire as best as you can. To do that, I used a smaller rounded tool. This one is also a clay tool. When you're finished with that, pull all the tape off and then trim as close as you can to your lines. Be careful of bending or warping your work that you just did. I actually had to go back over mine because I kind of pushed a little too hard. <laughs> Turn it over, put the wire back in, then fold the edges of the aluminum up over the wire so it holds it in place. Once you have it most of the way up over the edge, you can use your round tool to mash it over even further. I used the handle of those blue scissors. I liked using those better for that because it wasn't rounded, but it was that hard edge that I needed. So that way I wasn't too worried about slipping while I was doing it. Okay, for the legs of the table, I should have made them differently. So I'm going to suggest that you make them differently. And that is, I made a coil at one end of the piece of wire and glued that to the bottom of the table and that was the leg. Mm, I would say make sure you cut your legs to the length that you want them to be and put a bigger bead at the top underneath of the table and then a smaller bead at the foot of the table and that'll make sure your legs are all the same length and you won't run into the same problem that I had. But thankfully you can't really tell too much that my legs aren't the same length and I'm glad for that. <laughs> While I still had my plier and wires handy I went ahead and made the handle for the arm and I used my craft mat and the table itself to make sure I had it the right size. Now that we have all the metal bits that we need made, we can go ahead and attach them. While you're gluing your legs on, make sure that you're not pushing down too hard. I used super glue and baking soda to glue mine on because it is an instant bond and it does hold to metal as long as it's scuffed up. Then I put beads on all four feet. Quite honestly, I wanted to turn them the other way and make them look like little rollies, but instead I decided just to go this route. While you still have it upside down, go ahead and add both handles to either end of the cart. And with that, it is finished. If you want to add another bent bar in between the legs, go for it. I think it would help it look more realistic. Next, we're going to make the cart. And it's very similar to the table, although our little square made of wire just needs to be a one by one inch square. For the first part of the stand, I used a piece of wire quite a bit longer than what I wanted and started with a coil just like I did for the legs at both the top and bottom. Again, if you don't want to use the coil method, then you can use a bead to give you a larger surface to attach the top and base to. Then I moved on to the legs. This I did a bit differently because I wanted it to kind of look like a bar stool bottom. For that I used the width of my pliers to make right angles and it kind of ended up making a horseshoe shape I guess you can call it. Also while off camera I cut a circle of aluminum about the size of a dime to make a mounting plate for the legs and for the post of the cart. Once you have all your metal pieces shaped you can glue them all together. I started with the legs first and glued them onto my base Next, I glued the tray to the post, then the post and tray to the base and feet. The last thing to do was add beads to all four of the legs, and the little cart is done. I hope this little tutorial gives you some ideas for your next Halloween project. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please hit subscribe and share and like and all that fun stuff. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.